Hello friends, my name is Steve Guttenberg and I am the Audiophiliac and today's show is all about the Enlium Amp 23R. Now it's, a, it's an integrated amplifier, very, very small footprint, just 10 and a half inches by nine inches. It stands just two and a quarter inches high, although it does have these extra footers the chassis is impeccable. It's all metal with integrated heat sinks. It does run warm to the touch. It is a class AB design, not D. Uh, 25 watts channel into eight ohms, 45 watts channel into four ohms. Now, Enlium is a California company, but they uh, do their R&D and build in South Korea. The amp, by the way, is a zero feedback design. That's rather unusual. This is a very high-end amplifier, by the way. I'm gonna get to the price soon enough. It is zero feedback. It uses a motorized volume pot that is a stepped attenuator that's basically triggering relay. So you hear it clicking as you're changing the volume. Knob feel is very, very satisfying. The knob actually offers a little bit of resistance, but feels nicely done. This is a minimalist design. Did I mention that earlier? Because <laughs> it is. It only has three inputs, two of which are RCAs. That's pretty standard, right? But the third one isn't uh, balanced. The third one are BNC connectors, and those are for future uh, Enlian components. Coming down the road will soon be a phono preamp and also a DAC. Now, that does come with a two-year warranty and service here in the U.S. is handled in the U.S. in their California facility. Here is a peek inside the AMP 23R. There are no niceties like a mono button or balance control. No, the front panel hosts just that volume control and the input selector, which also doubles as the power on-off button. Now take note, there is also a headphone jack, a 6.3 millimeter quarter inch headphone jack on the front panel. And it's not there just as a convenience that yeah, you can plug in your headphones. No, 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 no. The AMP 23R is an excellent, truly excellent headphone amplifier. I used my best headphones with it and it, its abilities with headphones are extraordinary. For the speakers I used over the course of this review, well, I used three pair the Cabas Murano that I just recently reviewed here, the Magnapan LRS Plus, because it's a very power hungry speaker and I was wondering whether the 45 watts channel into four ohms would do it, and it did. But the main speaker over the course of the review was the most obvious choice, my Klipsch Cornwall 4s, which are very high sensitivity speakers, and that was extraordinary. That was a terrific match. And don't worry guys, there will be an audiophiliac viewer system of the day later on in today's show. Now the price, the price is $6,250 in the United States. And that price includes those footers that I alluded to earlier and of course the remote control. Oh, let's take a look for a quick second at the specifications for the AMP 23R. When I first hooked up the AMP 23R, the speakers that just happened to be set up at that moment were the Magnapan LRS Plus. Now these are low sensitivity speakers, low impedance speakers, they're really tough load, especially for a little amplifier like this. But you know what, it, it was no problem. And the speakers uh, are highly transparent, very revealing of the source that you're hooking up to them. And it was very, I mean, yeah, very highly transparent, but not analytical, not you know, not overdoing it in terms of hearing all the, the bad stuff that's in recordings. It just, it was a perfect balance of, of purity and transparency and still had a bit of soul and warmth to it. So it was good, good going. And this record, I gotta say, Linda Ronstadt, man, she rocked. You know, I don't think of her that way, but she was hitting it hard. She was growling. She was, I wouldn't say screaming her guts out, but yeah, it was hard ass rock and roll from Linda. And the combination of the Amp 23R and the little LRS Plus, <laughs> it, took me, it took me by surprise. I was a very happy camper. So these, you know, these reviews are kind of a stream of consciousness. I don't mean making the review, I mean actually doing the work of listening. 
and I was playing this morning uh, music of the morning of the world. Anyway, it's a gamelan music, a lot of percussion, chanting, and the percussion just was amazing the way it just popped. It really had incredible dynamic range. And this is still on the LRS. Now at this point, by the way, I switched over, just wanted to really feel it. So I switched over to the Cornwall 4s, the Eclipse Cornwall 4s, set them up and did it again. And yikes, the difference in feeling and impact because that's what these speakers do so well. Again, with this little tiny amplifier, it was beyond my expectations. So yeah, things were going well. <laughs> at this stage of the review. So the next recording was a live recording by the band here in New York City. It's called Rock of Ages. Uh, you know, I wasn't a fan of the band at the time in the late 60s or early 70s. It, they kind of grew on me <laughs> later. But this recording, which actually was one of my least favorite of theirs, now I love it. It's probably my favorite band recording because it's live and because of the horns, the Alan Toussaint arranged horns, which again, they bug me at first. It's like, why are these horns here? But now those horns just really, just make this, just take those, that music to the next level. And anyway, with the Amp 23R, the spaces between the instruments just were deeper, uh, and vocals, of course, were just deeper. And it, it just popped more. It was more like the right there kind of sound, which you know, is a big thing for me. When I hear that, that sort of, it's happening right in front of me, I just love when that happens. So sticking with the Cornwall Fours, I played this one, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, the original film score by John Williams. This is far and away my favorite of his scores. It's got incredible dynamic range, great warmth, great soundstage depth. It's a phenomenal recording. And uh, so anyway, I'm playing it over the 23R and just hearing the string tone was great. Everything about it was, was checking all the right boxes for me. And I thought, okay, this is the time with this record, because it's such a good recording, I'm going to compare the Amp 23R to my Pass Labs XA25, which is 25 watts a channel. It's a lot bigger, but it's 25 watts a channel into 8 ohms, 50 watts into 4 ohms. So it's a, it's a logical comparison. And for a preamp, I use my Passlabs HPA1, which is a headphone amplifier, but I used it as uh, a preamp. Now, what did I hear? Well, first, the Pass uh, electronics were darker in tone. Less bright is another way of saying it. Less forward, more relaxed over the Passlabs gear. You know, the soundstage was wider, this big orchestra. The soundstage was wider with the Passlabs, but not as deep and no soundstage depth was definitely shallower over the pass and less 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 of a sense of hall ambience and or reverb probably in this case there was less of that with the pass and more of that with the amp 23r it depends as always it depends on what you're looking for if you're looking for uh, a more transparent sound a more resi sound, more high res sound, I would say the Amp 23R is the winner. If you're looking for more tone, weight, substance to the sound, I think the Pass Labs is superior. Okay, so what about headphones? Yeah, I have a bunch, as you may have noticed in my videos. I have a bunch and I picked my very best ones to try out on the Amp 23R, starting with the Abyss Diana. Now, that actually that's made here in New York State, by the way. Shout out to them. But anyway, this headphone is, well, it's a platinum magnetic like the LRS Plus. And it had that uber clear, very low distortion sound that, that both the headphone and the MagnaPan share. And it was very, very open sounding, very relaxed, not warm, but relaxed like nothing phased this headphone. So for music, I was using this one. It's the Kronos String Quartet. The album is called Pieces of Africa. Again, really, really good recordings. You know, I, I try to use good recordings for most of these things because it, it counts, right? It's a phenomenal recording and has soul to it. Yeah, it's not bright. Those strings are just so sweet. And the African percussion and the chanting 
just really good. And the sound stage over the Diana was just big and open and just phenomenal. Now, I, I also use another planar magnetic, yeah, it's planar magnetic, the Meze Empyrean, which has a warmer, fuller, bigger, weightier sound. It's a full size over the ear headphone. Super comfortable, by the way, more comfortable than the Diana. And it just, it, it, it ripened, the sound ripened and took on more weight and substance. But again and again, every headphone I played, including the least expensive one, which was the Grado Hemp headphone. So I sang that three times fast. And that headphone does soundstage really, really well, just big, wide, open. And the, the Amp 23 is so quiet, so pure, it just made every headphone sound at its absolute best. Some of the best headphone sound I've ever heard with this little amplifier. So yeah, I, I imagine that most people, most of my viewers especially, are gonna be using it with speakers, but you know what? It sounds really, really good with headphones. Even hard to drive headphones, no problem. This thing's got a lot of juice. Alrighty, so now we are going to do, so Steve, what do you really think? And I think that the Enlium Amp 23R is going to appeal to a very specific type of buyer. This isn't kind of for everybody amplifier. First of all, the price is $6,250. That's a lot of change. And it's tiny and it's not super powerful, but it's elegant and it's beautiful and it feels great. And that remote, I don't think I made a big enough deal about the remote. The remote is super, it's a Steve remote. It's volume up, volume down, source select and mute. That's it and it feels good in my hand. So that, that counts for something and it's all metal. But yeah, this amplifier, it's not, I'm not gonna say it's gonna win over everybody, it's not. You say, for that kind of money, I want something bigger, I want something more powerful. Yeah, 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 I get it. There's plenty of other options there. For that buyer that doesn't want a big hulking amplifier sitting on their rack or on their shelf, they want something that's just there. You know what, let me just sum it up this way. It's not a run of the mill, yeah, another high-end integrated amplifier. It's doing its own thing. And speaking of special, it is now time for the Audiophiliac Viewer System of the Day. This one comes from Savard. He put together a system of vintage and new because he was looking for a very laid back, organic presentation. The turntable is a fully restored 1984 Oracle Alexandria Mark II with a prelude tone arm and a Stanton 8815 cartridge. Cassette deck is a 1983 Sansui 570. CD player, actually SA CD player, is a Denon DCD 1600NE. The amp is a fully restored Sansui AU717. Speakers, Tanoi Legacy Eaton's, and the cables are Wireworld, Take 5 Audio, and Vanzenhall. The equipment stands and speaker stands were custom made. Nice going. Alrighty, we are back. My name is Steve Guttenberg, and I am the Audiophiliac. If you like what I'm doing here on the channel, please consider joining my Patreon. Uh, it's easy to get to. Just go to patreon.com slash audiophiliac, and yes, there is a link to that below. Uh, I'm having the best time. This is over four years that I've had a patron, Patreon, and uh, communicating with my patrons and having dialogues with them every month is a blast. It's just so nice to get to know the people on the other side of the camera. So check out the Patreon. Of course, the podcast. The podcast is uh, coming up, what is it, like almost three months old. There's a bunch of episodes up there, wide range. I just did one that was kind of an experimental episode. Uh, it's called uh, Life After Death or something like that. Uh, look for that one because it kind of breaks the mold of what I usually do. And that's the idea for me of what the podcast is for. It's for stretching out. It's for doing things that I wouldn't do here on the YouTube channel. So. You can hear it on Spotify and on Apple Podcasts and iHeartRadio and, and also my own website, which is linked to below. It's called, by the way, the Audiophiliac Podcast. Catchy name, right? Yeah. Anyway, I think my work here is at last complete. Yes, it is. Thank you again for watching. And I really, really do 
Hope to see you back here again very, very soon. Bye-bye.